<clears throat> so the, again, this is sort of, I should have tacked this one slide onto the back of the last lecture. It's just one last point I'll make, and this will be the kind of last uh, conceptual topic that will potentially be on the test. <clears throat> and that's the scenario where you have uh, both drilling-induced tensile fractures and breakouts. And so in, in that scenario, you can actually estimate the rock strength in situ. And the reason for that is that if you recall, there was an equation uh, because a breakout is sort the, the breakout is in equilibrium with this with the rocks at the stress. There was an equation that, that we presented when we were talking about breakouts that showed SH max as a function of the unconfined compressive strength of the rock, CO, then you know all the pore pressure and, and reservoir parameters, and SH min, uh, and this wellbore breakout width, okay, and in measured in radians in this case. So we can log the well to get a wellbore breakout width, and if we ha know the other reservoir parameters and the rock strength, then we can determine SH max, okay. So this is, you know, in the case where we have breakouts. However, if you have tensile-induced fractures, then you can determine SH max directly from those tensile-induced fractures, as, of course, assuming the tensile strength of the rock is zero, okay? And so if we have tensile-induced fractures, and then we can measure SH min from a defit analysis, then we plug that all back into the first equation, and we measure the, you know, so we, we log the well, we have the wellbore breakout width, we do defit, we have SH min, then the only unknown in that scenario then is CO, and you can actually solve this equation for the strength of the rock. So um, you can determine what the strength of the rock is in situ from the combination of these two things. In the scenario where you have both drilling-induced tensile fractures and breakouts. <clears throat>